On behalf of Musculoskeletal Australia, I'd like to welcome you to our webinar this afternoon on the importance of physical activity for musculoskeletal and general health. Now, I know that there's uh, quite a staff from various neighbourhood houses around Australia viewing uh, the webinar this afternoon, um, but also uh, I know there might be some uh, people, some older people who often attend programs at neighbourhood houses who are also viewing the webinar. So a particular welcome to you this afternoon. There's no doubt it's been an incredibly turbulent time for, for everybody and, and certainly for some sections of the community more than others. Um, so I think it's great to be able to, to you know, view the webinar this afternoon and talk about something positive in relation to physical activity and the importance. And certainly there's a big focus on physical activity at the moment with everyone being um, stuck at home and so on. So it's it's so important to, to get out and or um, you know, when uh, neighbourhood houses, some of which are open throughout Australia, can actually um, you know, have their programs running again and if not, sort of try to do some physical physical activity in your own right. I certainly know that neighbourhood houses and centres around Australia have been doing a fantastic job with supporting their local communities during this time. So that's that's really fantastic. Um, so uh, Musculoskeletal Australia has got a, apart from our webinars and so on, we've also got a range of resources and um, interesting videos that people might like to look at. Uh, the project that we're doing um, for Sport Australia, our Active Neighbourhoods for Older Australians project, uh, we've got some information about the project on that website. Uh, we've also got some other videos, we've got information sheets and so on about various musculoskeletal conditions. So it might be something that people would like to look at and through our website um, and the address for the website um, was on it, your screens a minute ago and so you can um, have a look at that in your spare time. Our presenter for this afternoon is Miss Akshita Sandaresh. Akshita has been working at St Vincent's Hospital in Melbourne for just over five years in various areas, but she's been a senior orthopaedic physiotherapist for the last three years. She works both across the inpatients area and also the outpatients area. Akshita studied at the University of Melbourne and graduated in 2014 with the Doctor of Physiotherapy with distinction. She's also previously studied at Melbourne Uni um, and completed a Bachelor of Biomedicine. Uh, graduating in 2011. Now Akshita is actually broadcasting from St Vincent's today and I just said to her before if there's any sort of loud announcements that come over the PA just to pause um, so don't be concerned if Akshita actually stops just to allow the announcements not to interrupt what she's saying um, but without further ado I'll hand things over to Akshita. Thanks very much Akshita. Thank you very much for that kind introduction, Jen, and thank you all for joining this afternoon, if you're able to join live, and for those of you who've taken your time to, to watch this later on. Um, first and foremost, I want to emphasise the importance of physical activity, particularly under these um, very unusual conditions, and many of you may be staying at home watching this, and so I hope this gives you a little bit of an idea of why physical activity is important, some of the benefits that are involved um, around that, um, some of the considerations as well, and hopefully inspire you to take part in some physical activity. So to begin with, the formal definition of physical activity includes any bodily movement that is produced by your muscles and requires energy to be expended, and that it also produces progressive health benefits. Now, this doesn't mean it only includes those that run marathons or participate in any uh, group exercise classes, but it also includes things like walking, gardening, and some of the leisure activities you may be or may not be completing, such as golf and lawn bowls as well. Now, why do we actually care about physical activity? And I'm focusing predominantly on an older population who are 65 years or, or older. According to research, um, it's shown that in Australia, over time, the proportion of older people will increase. And it's thought that by about 2051, 29% uh, of our population will be 65 years or older. The research also shows that the rates of physical activity reduces as we age. And this is associated with a number of health issues and conditions. So as a result, it's really important and vital that we address physical activity, particularly in this age. 
Now, some of the common thoughts, which is uh, asterisked by our very large cross here and is often misconstrued, is that older people are frail and weak and can't actually participate in physical activity, that we need less physical activity as we get older, that exercise is actually hazardous or dangerous for older individuals, and that it's only important to do vigorous activity as well. But uh, fortunately, this is not the case, and I'll go through some of this information in the coming slides. There are a multitude of benefits of physical activity, which I'll go through in more detail later on in this presentation. And these have both immediate and long-term effects as well, not only physically, but mentally as well. And it'll, they both have a positive impact on the quality of life. So firstly, how much physical activity is enough, you might be asking. So what I thought it'd be good to go through is the Australian Physical Activity Guidelines for the Health of Older Australians. Now there are five key points which I'll go through. Firstly, um, the guideline suggests that older people should do some form of physical activity regardless of your age, weight, health concerns or ability. Again, when I refer to older Australians, I'm referring to those who are 65 years of age or older. And within the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander population, I'm referring to those who are 55 years of age or older. Now, some of these guidelines are also applicable to individuals with uh, various um, ages, health status and function. So it can be applicable to a slightly younger population. The second point is that older people should be active every day, completing physical activity that includes a range of activities that incorporates flexibility, strength, balance, as well as fitness. Thirdly, older people should accumulate at least 30 minutes of moderate intensity physical activity on most, preferably all days of the week. When I'm referring to moderate intensity, I'm referring to an activity that um, makes your heart beat a little bit faster and it may make you short of breath, but you should be able to comfortably speak in sentences. The fourth point is that older people should start at a level that they're able to manage and slowly and gradually build up to the recommended amount, type and frequency of activity. So this also applies to people who have stopped or are starting a new physical activity. The last point, according to the Australian Physical Activity Guidelines, are that older people should continue, um, who have previously been involved in vigorous activity, should continue with this, um, but ensure it's suited to their capability later in life, but take into consideration any safety precautions or health conditions that may be impacting them later on in life. A visit, vigorous physical activity is referring to one that makes your heart beat a lot faster and also makes you short of breath. And it's actually quite challenging to, to speak between those deep breaths. So that's the difference between vigorous and moderate physical activity. There are various types of exercises to include that I previously mentioned. Um, first and foremost, you want to include something that um, incorporates endurance or fitness. And this can include things such as swimming, walking and cycling as well. It's important to include activities um, around strength. Um, and this can include things like using dumbbells or weights or resistance bands if you do have access to this as well. The recommended dosage or how many you should do are uh, eight to 12 repetitions and completing one to two, one to three sets, I should say, sorry, of these eight to 12 repetitions. And you want to be completing that two to three times a week. Lastly, incorporating balance, mobility and flexibility activities are really important. So that may include turning or walking, some steps or stretching if it's safe and able to, if you're safe and able to do so. So the important thing is that you incorporate a lot of variety because that can keep you quite motivated, particularly in this time when you're spending quite a bit of time at home. Um, and it, it's also dependent on your goals and your abilities as well and what you have available to you. So exercise itself can be incidental and by that, I mean um, physical activity may involve actually walking to the shops 
at the moment. It may include gardening or housework as well. It can be leisure activities such as golf and lawn bowls or something like ballroom dancing. It can be supervised exercise classes by a health professional or those that are conducted in the neighbourhood houses. And it can also be structured, if you like, either individually or in group classes. And they can be land-based or in the water, such as hydrotherapy as well. Now, there are many benefits of physical activity, as I previously mentioned. So first and foremost, it has a really positive effect in terms of building and maintaining your muscle health, your joint health, as well as your bones. It can reduce your risk of injury from falls and reduce the likelihood of falls because you're much stronger and your balance is improved by doing physical activity. And this can in turn improve your overall function and your quality of life, as well as your ability to manage at home on your own. It has positive effects on your mental health and reducing by reducing depression, I should say. And it also reduces the risk of a variety of other health conditions, such as um, heart disease, stroke, diabetes as well. Now, there's quite a lot of evidence in terms of the prevention of a variety of health conditions. Um, and this includes diabetes as well. Cancer, uh, particularly, um, there's a quite a bit of evidence for surrounding um, breast and colon cancer. Um, it, we know it's a modifiable risk um, in arthritis. So by doing exercise, education and losing weight, um, this can help prevent osteoarthritis, but also manage your symptoms and improve your function as well. It can help prevent cardiovascular conditions such as heart attack and stroke, and there's really strong evidence to reduce this risk. It can prevent bone loss, particularly in postmenopausal women, so it can help um, prevent osteoporosis. And as I previously mentioned, it has a really positive effect on mental health, and it's shown to lower the rates of depression when you're involved in exercise and physical activity. So the more physical activity you're involved in and you're safely able to be involved in, it is um, shown to reduce the risk, risk of those diseases that I just mentioned. Apart from reducing the risk, its physical activity has also been shown to improve the management of chronic conditions such as diabetes, cancer and arthritis, but it's also shown to help manage things like lower back pain as well. So there's a variety of reasons about why you should be involved in physical activity. Now I've gone through what physical activity you should be involved in and why you should do it. And so you're probably thinking, where do I go from here and what should I do with this information? Well, firstly, the considerations you need to take into account, whether you're running an exercise class or you're participating, is motivation. So I think variety is really key. Your goals is also really important to consider because that will help you maintain your physical activity over a longer period of time. It's important to consider what availability um, of equipment that you may have um, and also access to particular facilities. So just because you may not have access to a swimming pool, for example, doesn't necessarily mean you can't participate in a physical activity. You just may need to consider um, what activity to participate in and may move towards something that's more land-based. The cost is also an important factor to consider in terms of um, participating in physical activity, but it doesn't is not necessarily a barrier because as I just mentioned, things like gardening, dancing, walking to the shops is also considered physical activity. It's really important to use appropriate equipment if you do have access to them. So if you're just starting out, probably not best to start with a 20 kilo dumbbells when you haven't lifted weights all your life. So it might be start better to start at a lower level in terms of the weight and slowly build up. It's really important to include a warm up and cool down at the beginning and after physical activity. And also try and avoid dehydration by drinking water throughout your physical activity as well as afterwards. It's really important to start as at an achievable level and build up gradually and to make sure that the program that you're involved in is individualized and appropriate for you and your abilities at that time. Okay. Um, some of the safety considerations to take into account, particularly for those who are running classes, um, is uh, the cognition 
of an individual, whether they're a falls risk or not. So it may mean that instead of doing exercises in standing, that you may modify that to sitting. Or if you're able to provide extra supervision or assistance to complete an exercise or a physical activity, that you might incorporate those strategies as well. Lastly, it's important to consider any health conditions that someone um, uh, that someone has or any considerations such as those who might have post-op restrictions after particular types of surgery. In some, some healthcare services and uh, they may actually take into account people's health conditions and complete surveys or take information and these are by quite qualified health professionals and they use this to help dictate what the most appropriate level is for a patient or a participant to start. Now, if you're very interested in some information, um, I would suggest that you would have a look at the Musculoskeletal Australia website. There's a lot of information about a variety of conditions and different ways to access certain um, groups and activities and gain some support as well. Here I've got listed a variety of resources that you can access through the Musculoskeletal Australia website that go through certain exercises, exercises for bone health, but also give you some information about pain as well. So I would strongly suggest that you have a look through these if you're quite interested in that, or if you're not really sure where to begin on your physical activity journey. There are a multitude of programs that are currently offered through uh, the neighbourhood houses. Um, these include things such as gentle exercise, walking groups, Zumba, Pilates and yoga, swimming and water-based exercises. Now, this is just not an exhaustive list. So again, I strongly encourage you visit the Musculoskeletal Australia website to have a bit, um, to gain a bit more of an understanding of what's actually on offer. And trust me, there are plenty more. So that wraps up my presentation. Um, does anyone have any questions? Thank, thanks very much, Akshita. That was, um, it doesn't matter how many times I hear all the messages about physical activity and, the, and its importance, I'm, I'm still making notes to remind myself for my own personal use. So you, you provided a very comprehensive overview. Um, and can I encourage anyone who's got any questions um, in relation to Akshita's presentation to type some questions into the question box there. Um, so we've got a few minutes for questions and so on, and I've got a couple of questions as well. I think I think it was fantastic um, how you mentioned about the importance of variety of physical activity and, and the fact that even things like walking to the shop or gardening can be considered because I think sometimes when people see like words like endurance, they think, oh my goodness, that mm -hmm. doesn't apply to me. Um, but I thought about even for an older person who might be starting back into doing some physical activity, the thought of endurance is really just maybe maybe work, walking for a short distance and then the next couple of days walking slightly longer distance. Would you like to just talk us through that, Akshita, with regards to how people might build up their, their sort of cap capacity to be a little bit more physically active um, each time? Sure. Thank you, Jen. Well, um, as, you, as I mentioned before, and something that you pointed on quite correctly, physical activity doesn't necessarily mean running a marathon to build your endurance. Um, if you want to get started, I think first and foremost, it's really important to think about the activities you're currently doing and that you enjoy. So if, for example, you enjoy walking, um, but you can make it to the end of the street to begin with, that might be your goal for the first day. And the next day, you might slowly increase that to another half block and then on the third day to another, an, another block to the point where you can make a whole walk around the entire block. But it's important to consider how you feel post your involvement with physical activity. So if, for example, you've walked to the end of the street and you found by the end of it, you're actually, you're making it, you're making a, it's making your heart beat very, very fast and you're very, very short of breath. And it means that you're really fatigued for the rest of the day that might be an indication that you've probably done too much too soon. So you might need to decrease that a little bit. So looking at your symptoms and how you've pulled up after physical activity can give you a guide on how to slowly build up as well. And again, if you're participating in activities such as gardening um, and you can currently complete that for 10 minutes, 
building endurance might mean that you add on an extra few minutes but again then review how you feel after that and slowly build up from there Hmm. We have a um, one question, Akshita, a sort of question comment that's come through, which is a very good um, point. Uh, someone has pointed out that while the medical reasons for undertaking physical activity are important, it's often the lifestyle reasons that are the greatest motivators, like being able, like for an older person, being able to play with their grandchildren and so on. Uh, so the question is, um, are you aware of any material that focuses on these things that uh, neighbourhood houses could use as a resource? Well, at present, there are not specific resources for that, but I can certainly have a look um, online for you. Um, I think it's a very good point that um, activity has to be revolved around lifestyle factors as well. Um, but it's certainly important to consider that sometimes those lifestyle factors of, you know, looking after your grandchildren and playing with them, that is a form of physical activity in itself as well. So it might be worthwhile having a look at what you're currently involved in, in your day-to-day -day lifestyle that actually constitutes physical activity instead of having to put aside an extra half an hour or an hour, which might be challenging to do around babysitting grandchildren or looking after um, your family as well, that you can actually incorporate into physical activity without having to try and find extra time, which is often the case um, with a variety of, um, I guess, uh, What's the word I'm thinking of? Uh, I guess timetables that people are working around and things that they have to do. So incorporating the things yeah. that you're already doing. <laughs> yeah, commitments, that's the word. Thanks, Jen. Sorry, just had a mental blank there. No, no, that's all right. That's okay. Um, and look, I'm happy to have a look for resources as well. Uh, there was a sort of a document that we um, developed during a, a recent project, the Victorian Active Aging Partnership, uh, that actually was for the use of service providers um, to actually sort of try to tease out people's goals and motivations um, in relation to physical activity. Uh, so I'm, I will send that out to all neighbourhood houses. But I think the question is very much about resources for older people. So we'll have a look into that and see what we can find. Um, someone else has made a comment as well about um, at the moment, um, or a lot of neighbourhood houses are delivering their classes via Zoom online. Mm. And uh, the comment is it's really difficult to engage older people or people with um, with limited English skills. Uh, so any, any suggestions um, how that might be overcome? Oh, I can certainly um, attest to that being quite challenging. That's something that they're incorporating here through... Um, uh, Zoom classes or uh, Zoom interactions with a lot of our patients at the moment. Something I would suggest is there are some resources online for specific, specific health conditions that are in different languages. So if you're targeting a population um, that do have arthritis, for example, Arthritis Australia have lots of resources um, that go into the importance of physical activity and exercise, um, particularly for this population. And it's available in a variety of languages as well. So I think that's important to help engage this, um, this population group. I think it's also important to try and overcome some of those barriers. So if you do have the availability of interpreters, such as phone interpreting services that could be involved in those classes and be able to interpret while you're delivering a class, that's an other option and something that we incorporate here in the hospital as ABLE. I think it's also, I guess it's important to acknowledge that there are some challenges. Um, so in terms of incorporating um, physical activity in a uh, over the computer, which is not very traditional um, in the sense, I think also reinsuring um, uh, participants that you're safe and able to do so at home. And if you can offer any guidance in terms of modifying it by doing it in sitting, particularly if they're scared or worried about incorporating um, being involved in physical activity, that might be an, an alternative solution. I don't think there is a one size fits all in this circumstance. So it might be also um, worth a bit of trial and error as well. Yes, and I think, look, uh, there's no doubt that the idea of sort of delivering um, uh, exercise or physical activity uh, classes over, over uh, online via Zoom uh, is something that would be particularly very new to a lot of older people, not only mm -hmm. from the sort of you know, the idea of doing that, but also actually even dealing with the IT side of things. Yes. So I, I think um, 
what we might do through the Active Neighbourhoods Project is try to, you know, uh, really sort of encourage uh, ideas and sort of sharing people might have of, of different ways they've tried to promote that because it certainly is a new concept that everyone is having to deal with at the moment. So um, again, a good question um, and, and no easy answers just at the moment, but uh, I think it's it's also probably if it's possible to actually use word of mouth to actually get the the word around that it is it is okay it is it is manageable um, and just trying to encourage people to have a have a try if they've got the, um, the you know they're okay with sort of dealing with the IT side of things as well. Um, we've got a question um, about what is uh, kyphosis lordosis. Uh, Akshita, have you have you got just a brief uh, brief uh, response to that question? Um, I guess it's a very specific question, but thank you. So kyphosis and lordosis is looking at the position of your spine. Okay, without going into too much detail, kyphosis is more looking at your upper spine and more in a curved position. Um, and what was the second part of that as well? Sorry, Jen. Uh, well, yeah. So just asking what the condition is. What is what is kyph kyphosis lordosis? Okay, so kyphosis is referring to more your upper back in a curved position and lordosis is referring to your lower back again in a curved position, but it's in the opposite way to kyphosis. Right, thank you. Now, quite a clinical uh, request. Very uh, clinical yeah. question. That's right. Um, so this is an interesting one. Uh, someone said, I saw someone walking backwards for a while. Is this an exercise that should be considered? Sounds a bit dangerous to me. It does, and that's something that we actually do incorporate here. Um, walking backwards can help with your balance, um, so it's strongly encouraged. However, um, it's very important to do this in a safe manner. Um, so I wouldn't encourage it for all of you at home or in neighbourhood houses, to start, everyone to start walking backwards down the street or anything like that. Um, and you should be supervised um, when you first begin um, and you have something to hold on to as well. So I'd certainly encourage you be supervised by a, a professional or someone running a class um, prior to incorporating walking backwards as part of your physical activity. But it def definitely has benefits in um, specifically for balance, but there are a lot of safety considerations to take into account to ensure it's right for you. Um, someone has also, uh, you know, made a good comment that they try to include some small group games at the end of each exercise session, which the participants love, but sometimes they get quite competitive and occasionally might increase their risk of injury and falls. Do you have any suggestions to keep them from overdoing it? I think first and foremost, it's really important to outline why you're doing the activity um, and that it's not for a competitive nature, it's for their health benefits as well. And I think it's really important to reiterate that message throughout that activity. I think it's fantastic that you're incorporating games at your activity to make it fun and exciting for patients, but it might be that you do it in a shorter session or have breaks to reiterate the point of why you're doing that activity and it's not for a competitive nature to reduce their risk of any injury or falls um, so they might need constant reminders but I think what's really important is that you continue doing you know that sort of exercise in a, in a fun environment because that's really important for motivation um, but it might be that you uh, start those sort of programs with uh, more education about why it is. Mm. Yeah and, and probably have some very clear clear rules around it yes. but yes uh, incorporating an element of fun and games um, in, a, in a physical activity session is certainly a great idea. So maybe just putting some, uh, some uh, clear, clear guidelines around that. Um, uh, also, um, the other thing I wanted to ask um, Akshita was um, in relation to um, whether neighbourhood house staff or even some older people might look up on, especially during this time of lockdown and um, being more sort of uh, being around the home, people might look online for different resources about uh, physical activity or different exercises and so on to do. What sort of suggestions or, or guidance can you give in relation to looking for things on the internet and, and what should people be aware of in relation to that? Thanks for that question, Jen. Um, I think first and foremost, it's really, it's great that we have access to a variety of resources on, resources on the internet. Um, there's various resources, just resources in written format or on YouTube, we might see videos as well. I think firstly, it's really important to take into consideration that 
all the information that you find on the internet is not necessarily accurate. So it's really important to use websites that are quite reputable, such as Musculoskeletal Australia, where you know the information that you gain is very accurate and up to date as well. Um, if you're unsure about some of the information you've seen on the internet, I would strongly encourage you to um, seek help if you're able to do so. So it might be discussing that with your GP. Um, currently, GPs also have Zoom meetings that are uh, that are available, and if you're able to set that up, you could have a discussion. Um, and that's what I would strongly suggest. It's really important to to know that what you read on the internet may not necessarily be individualized and appropriate for you and your abilities, and you, it might, it's worth discussing that before starting in an activity that you may have read on the internet. Mm, that's that's a good idea to actually gain advice from, from your local GP and, and given that uh, many, many sessions uh, are sort of available via telehealth to at the moment, so that's very true. Um, there is a, a comment or question about is there, are there any physiotherapy lessons available in neighbourhood houses? Um, I mean, there's lots of different physical activity exercise programs available through uh, neighbourhood houses and centres. Um, uh, physiotherapists would probably not normally, I mean, you, you need to check really with uh, local neighbourhood houses whether there's any physiotherapists that might vi visit um, neighbourhood houses at different times. Um, but, uh, you know, uh, otherwise there would also be physiotherapists available in the broader community. Um, so, uh, is it with no further questions coming through, um, oh, hang on, sorry, yes, there is a, um, yes, someone has made, just made the comment that uh, they've Googled Gold Zumba on YouTube uh, at the mm -hmm. moment, uh, as they can't attend classes in person, so that's that's a good idea, and this person's saying it is actually designed for for um for older people so that's great um so look no further questions coming through at the moment if anyone's got any last moment last questions to come through um please please type them in now uh the other thing is though um i think it's um really been great to actually whilst we talk about physical activity all the time i think it's been really fantastic actually to, to actually um, have that broad reminder of why it's so important and to remember that there's all different forms and, and those important messages about, you know, finding something that suits you, that's something that's manageable and something that's also um, really makes you feel sort of engaged and keen to do it. Because the other thing that's so important about physical activity, whether some people might be happy to do it by themselves, but there's no doubt and hopefully we can soon get back to a situation where we can get back to our group activities and enjoy, enjoy them because, um, the aspect of social connection is also so important. Certainly. Any any last closing comments from you, Akshita? No, that's all. I hope you're all safe and safe and well. And um, just remind yourself that any sort of physical activity is important in your daily life. And you may actually be involved in more than you than more than you think. And it's really important, um, particularly when we're we're stuck at home predominantly in, in this time. So I think. This is just one of those presentations that has come at a has come at a good time, just to remind you all. Mm. And we've got one last comment from someone who's actually a Zumba instructor, and they've got online classes. So um, if uh, people want to look up online Zumba, <laughs> there's another option for you. But uh, remember to check in with your neighbourhood house. I know neighbourhood houses are doing a great job within the current circumstances to to maintain not only the sort of, you know, any physical activity programs, but also this incredibly important social support that they're providing to the communities at the moment. So, so well done to everybody in what is a rather difficult time, particularly um, in Victoria at the moment, um, whereas other states have been lucky enough to actually sort of uh, have a bit more opening up and, and, and getting back to a sense of some normality, although we all have to be so careful. Akshita, thank you so much for your presentation today. It was a very clear, an informative presentation and we're very grateful to you for giving of your time and energy today to provide this information um, to everyone who's tuned in, neighbourhood house staff and volunteers and also to any older people who have also tuned in as well to really uh, benefit from your very valuable information. So thanks very much Akshita, thanks everyone. Re uh, remember this recording, this has been recorded, it will be available on our website so if there's any other colleagues or friends or neighbours 
who maybe you think might be interested, make sure you uh, refer them to our Musculoskeletal Australia website. Uh, it'll be on our Active Neighbourhoods for Old Australians um, section of the website um, and can be freely viewed by anyone. So on that note, I, I bid everyone a very good afternoon and thanks very much for joining us. Thank you very much, Jen.